welcome back to my channel. Um, I just wanted to share with you, I did a big art supply haul recently. I just wanted to kind of show you what I got, chat a little bit about it, and chat a little bit about some of the books I've read the last couple of months and just have kind of a relaxing unboxing, playing with art supplies, and having a chat video. So I recently placed a really large order at Blick.com. Um, I've shopped around with a few different art supply websites before, and this one tends to have pretty good prices on everything. They don't frequently have sales on the stuff that I buy, but the um, regular listing price tends to be a little bit lower, especially from like in-person art stores. When I shop in person, everything is a lot more expensive. So I do prefer to buy art supplies online when I can. The first thing I purchased was these really pretty um, luminants by Karan, Karan Dash. I'm not exactly sure how you pronounce the brand name, but I love their colored pencils. I actually own their complete scent set of watercolor pencils. Um, so I wanted to purchase some of their regular colored pencils. I've really found that I'm enjoying using these on top of my paintings to add in details and shading. Um, so I am getting more into the colored pencil game. Um, I also purchased some new uh, paintbrushes. I really, I got one of these in like a um, art subscription box. I send you like random art supplies once a month. I don't subscribe to those anymore because I just end up with a lot of stuff that I never use. But in one of those um, art supply boxes. Um, I got one of these, I think they're called Velvet Touch uh, paintbrushes, and they're just so comfortable to hold on to. They're really smooth. Um, they're by Princeton. Uh, I just bought a couple of different sizes of the round brushes. Those are my preferred brush type to paint with, um, and I mostly use them for uh, gouache painting. The primary thing that I purchased during this uh, supply haul, art supply haul, was um, acrylic wash from Holbein. Um, as I've been playing around with different um, art brands, I found that Holbein is one of my favorites. So I thought I would stock up on some new colors. I was painting some uh, witches that I'm planning on doing for like a Halloween collection. Yes, I'm already thinking ahead to Halloween. It's my favorite holiday. I like to plan it way in advance, um, but I was missing a lot of colors that I wanted to use um, for those illustrations. And then I just ended up adding a bunch of other colors also that I felt like would come in handy. Um, for instance, there's a really pretty like lilac purple um, that matches my color scheme for the Halloween collection perfectly. So I wanted to pick that up and then, yeah, just a bunch of other um, gouache painting uh, tubes, tubes of paint. Um, and I am going to swatch everything um, that I'm pulling out in this art supply haul so we can see what it all looks like. I love how these colors dry down to this beautiful matte finish. Um, they're very smooth when they dry and um, the color that you see in the tube is the color that you get on the page when it's dry, which is amazing. I um, have a hard time when the color changes as it dries uh, and it doesn't turn out exactly the way I had envisioned it, but with these you, you get exactly what you see, which is perfect. While I was shopping for art supplies, I also ended up picking up these really pretty um, watercolors. They're all in like blues and a little bit of black. Um, it's called the Glacier Collections by Schmincke. I think that's how you say it. Um, these are really these really pretty watercolors that are granulating, so they have they dry with these really pretty um, patterns and different color variations in them. Um, so I wanted to add those in as well. I'm not as big of a watercolorist. I it's something I would like to get to know more. But for some reason, watercolor really scares me. But I had to grab these because the colors were just so pretty and hopefully I'll find a way to use them. All right, let's get to swatching. I'm gonna start with the Luminance colored pencils. I really love these. They're wax-based, um, but I haven't had any problems with like wax buildup when I'm using them. 
The thing I love about them the most is the color payoff is so rich. Um, they're really pigmented and um, I have no problems layering them over my gouache paintings. Um, blending is beautiful. Everything about them is chef's kiss. Um, I've tried a bunch of different other pencil brands and I, while I enjoy most of them, I think these have got to be um, my absolute favorite as far as colored pencils go. All right, while I'm swatching away, let's chat books for a minute. Um, I do like to um, talk about books a little bit on my channel. I don't do it that often. I would like to do it more often. Um, but uh, so I already talked about the books I read in January in a, in a previous video. Um, so in February, I read 14 books, which is a lot. <laughs> I'm definitely not going to talk about all of them. It's too many. Um, and in March, I read only eight books, um, which is pretty low. It's on the lower end for me. I think I average around 10 books a month. But um, I just wanted to talk to you about some of my favorites. So in February, I read um, Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. Um, I love the cover art on this book. That's why I picked it up, just because I love the cover so much. I ended up going with the UK cover because it was like this really pretty ivory with gold. It was really beautiful. Um, and I grabbed it for that reason alone. And as soon as it arrived, I read it and I loved it. So it's about a, a professor and she studies fairies and she's writing an encyclopedia of fairies. So she's gonna be the first one to write like a full encyclopedia um, about fairy lore and where they live and just everything that all of the knowledge that everyone has up to this point about fairies. And so she goes to this distant, um, land up kind of in the Norway area is how it's described um, to find this specific group of fairies that no one has studied yet because they're particularly dangerous. Um, so she goes up there and she's very socially awkward. She doesn't understand um, how to communicate really well with other people. So she gets off to a rocky start with the people that live there. Um, and she has a um, like, uh, rival slash friend like they are um what's the word i'm looking for frenemies in a way but um, not not in any serious capacity she just gets annoyed by him sometimes and he gets a lot more credit for his work than she does and she's trying to get to the point where she can be um a tenured professor like he is anyways he shows up and their relationship dynamic is really interesting and charming and funny I would say this book is definitely more plot uh, based. If you're looking for a romance, there wasn't, I mean, there's a tiny bit of romance in it, but barely anything. I think there was like one kiss. That's about it. Um, but it was really charming, delightful, cozy story. I would definitely label this as a cozy fantasy. Um, I really loved it. So in February, I also read um, Hellbent, which is the second book of the Ninth House series by Leigh Bardugo. Um, I talked about Ninth House in my previous video. I loved it. Um, it's very dark, but very interesting. The magic system I thought was really entertaining. It's more like magical realism. Um, and I loved it. Hellbent was just as good. I thought we got a little bit more character development and I am looking forward to the next book in that series. Um, I also started a new series, Legendborn. Um, that's, this is a YA series with a really interesting magic system um, based on like the legend of King Arthur. Um, and then there's a second magic system um, that's uh, I, it's really cool. Um, the main girl has lost her mother. Um, she died and she goes to a community college where she finds this secret organization um, and she's trying, she finds there's a link between um, this organization and the events that led up to her mother's death. And so she um, infiltrates the organization to try and find out what happened and why. Um, and it was really good. I really enjoyed it. Um, I actually did end up reading book two in March, which I didn't love as much just because it felt it was definitely a second book in a series book with meaning that um it was is the second book is setting up really for the third book 
Um, so it's a lot of um, putting pieces in place so that the third book can really shine. Um, but the ending of the second book was really good. There was a really good twist at the end. Um, so I am excited to read book three in that series. All right, and the last book of note that I read in February it was called The Life You Can Save, um, Acting Now to End World Poverty by Peter Singer. Um, he is a pretty well-known philosopher who's given a lot of like TED Talks and um, different things about just entering human and animal suffering and cruelty. And this book is a really interesting um, argument about what we should be doing to help others and what our moral response, moral and ethic, ethical responsibility is to helping others and how to help others and the most effective ways of helping others. It kind of touches on the effective altruism movement and I found it really interesting and um, it has helped me commit to um, giving more and giving more effectively. Um, if you go to the Life You Can Save website, you can actually get the book and the audio book for free. I listened to the audio book on Audible. I didn't know you could get it for free at the time, which I'm perfectly fine with paying for it because all of the proceeds from the book um, go to charitable organizations. Um, but you can actually read the book completely for free if you go to their website and you can just download it and read it or listen to it. Okay, and then the notable books that I led, re led that I read in March, um, there's three in this category, because um, I only read eight books, but um, Legends and Lattes was so cozy. I listened to this on my drive home from a visit to my family. I listened to the whole book in one go. It was wonderful. Um, this definitely falls under the category of cozy fantasy. Um, it's about a, I think she's an ogre. I'm not sure. Um, orc, something like that. She is like a mercenary, a hired mercenary. She wants to give up that life and she opens up a coffee shop in a a uh, town where they have never even heard of coffee um, and she kind of has to convince them to try bean water <laughs> basically um, and it's just interesting it goes from her her buying the property building the shop um, getting customers um, and it's just it made me want to open a coffee shop <laughs> Even though I don't drink coffee, that's how good and cozy and wonderful it was. I definitely recommend this book if you just want like good vibes only, nothing intense or stressful. Um, this is the book for you. I also read Stolen Air, which is the exact opposite. It is extremely tense and um, very dark. It's like a dark fairy tale type story. It is about a girl who is a fairy. She's in a changeling situation where she grows up um, as a child in a human family and 100% believes she is human, um, but then gets taken back to the fairy world um, as a fairy. And um, a friend that she made there comes and finds her and needs her help with something and then the adventure starts from there but um it is it was very dark very tense um very stressful <laughs> but the fairy tale like the dark fairy tale vibes are just there holly black does a really good job with that and i really enjoyed it All right, and then lastly, as far as books go, I wanted to mention um, the Remnant Chronicles series. This is a young adult novel, but it felt like it could very easily have been an adult novel. The only reason I think it's categorized as young adult is because the age of the uh, protagonist at the start of the story, I think she's like 17, um, but uh, it, it's really good. It follows Leah who is a princess, which I mean, classic YA, it's about a princess. Um, she's running away from home 
because she has been promised in an arranged marriage. She's done everything she could to get her parents to let her out of this agreement. She has no idea who the person is that she's supposed to marry or how old they are or anything. And this terrifies her. So she makes a plan and she runs away to live a normal life as a not princess. Um, and while she's on the run, she ends up encountering a prince and an assassin she doesn't know what either of them are um, but they figure out who she is um, and it's just and the adventure just starts from there it's these three main characters and they're all um, they're all using each other for their own ends and they're they're not communicating um, their plans to each other they're all kind of manipulating each other and um, none of them really knows what the other ones are really up to and so it keeps it really interesting this one is also pretty dark and tense um, but I really enjoyed it it was a good adventure story and I feel like it ended in a good place I read the third and last book in March and I really enjoyed it um, and that's that's about it for what I wanted to talk to you as far as um, as far as books go um, I'm going to now swatch the um, gouache, the gouache, <laughs> the interesting and weird word to say, and it's a weird word to spell, um, but the gouache, like I said, it dries so pretty. I just love the matte finish. I don't know, it just doesn't look like any other paint that I've ever used. Um, there is two types of gouache, so there's acrylic gouache, which is not water activated so once it dries um, it's dry you, you can paint over top of it you can do whatever else it's not going to pick back up off the page um, and then there's traditional gouache which is more of a it's like a very pigmented watercolor um, it can be reactivated with water but it looks like acrylic which is really cool if you use the water-based kind of like if you want to be able to use it as a watercolor it still has that opaqueness of an acrylic um, but it behaves like a watercolor so it's really um, interesting and fun and I think that's why um, a lot of artists have been experimenting with gouache lately just because it's so versatile and um, the color payoff is just way richer
friends. That is it for the swatches, and that is going to be it for this art supply haul. Um, as I speak, I already have a cart full of new art supplies and some that I've already purchased. Um, so there may be another art supply haul in our near future. I've found that I do really, really enjoy the luminance colored pencils, and there's some colors that I'm still missing, so I'm going to be ordering some more of those. And I've fallen down the ink rabbit hole. Um, so I've been buying some different inks and experimenting with those, and um, they're pretty fun. Um, so I'll be showing those to you soon as well. I want to thank you for hanging out with me for a minute and just chatting about art supplies and books, like my two favorite things in the entire world. Um, I hope that you are having a good week, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.